Good morning, traders. Can you hear me and see my screen? Should be able to. So if you could just uh, type yes in the uh, uh, advanced webinar uh, text uh, area. All right, excellent. All right, thank you, Kurt. Um, all right, guys. So, uh, yeah, welcome uh, to the webinar. It's Friday, uh, and uh, we've been hosting these in here for uh, in Discord for a, a more than a couple of weeks now. I think um, just before end of the year. Um, so, uh, uh, or maybe it has been just a couple of weeks. Uh, anyway, um, I wanted to kind of offer uh, it to everybody. Open it up. Uh, so that uh, you guys can get a feel for our education uh, and um, uh, offer it for free for now. It's usually for our Global Plus subscribers, the advanced education uh, and these webinars uh, that start at 10 a.m. East Coast time. Uh, and uh, what we do in here uh, is uh, go through live market analysis. Uh, we'll look at the live market and uh, uh, read it. Uh, look at the order flow, get some insight from it, uh, and then we'll project where we think price may go next and give insight to that. Uh, and that's what we're here for. Uh, so, you know, we're trying to uh, uh, get some sort of edge in the marketplace. Order flow can provide that edge, understanding uh, and reading order flow. Uh, now, this can work with all sorts of time frames. You can, like yesterday, Scott Pulsini mentioned, uh, you can trade the, the, the real-time volume. Uh, and look at the order flow in bookmap and trade that um, uh, and be successful. Uh, you can also look at much higher time frames, etc. So we'll, if you have any questions about that, we'll go through it. But uh, being able to understand what's going on within uh, the, uh, the order flow in your market structure is the key. And uh, we have an educational course that's online. Uh, you can learn all about it. And then you come to these webinars to uh, kind of acid test it, basically. Uh, you will uh, then apply what you've learned by reading the uh, current market. And we're here to guide you through that process so you can integrate it within your trading as well uh, and uh, develop your own trading plan. Uh, then we will go through um, uh, trading strategies and setups uh, as well as trade management uh, considerations. Uh, but uh, that's not the goal here. Uh, the goal is to um, uh, understand what book map is showing you how to read it uh, and apply it. Uh, then we have live trading with JTrader, a stocks trader on Wednesday, and Scott Pulsini, a futures trader on Thursday. So pretty robust education that you're getting uh, with those three elements. The course, the live analysis, uh, forward-looking, not hindsight analysis, uh, and then the live trading. Okay, so let's go through some risk disclosures and we'll jump in here uh, and see what's going on. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's jump in here uh, and let's take a look, uh, see what's going on. Uh, there's something that uh, I tweeted about uh, yesterday. Okay, and uh, I want to take a look at it. I don't have the MBO data since I, I closed Bookmap and then restarted it. Um, it was at the close here, so it was this in this area here. Yeah, let me let me show you our Twitter uh, for just a minute here. Okay, so here is the tweet, um, and uh, just something that we saw at the close. It was amazing. I mean, like uh, this is just a huge, huge spoof uh, is what it looks like to me. Uh, massive high liquidity coming in at the close. Uh, if you uh, years ago. Um, several years ago now because because of uh, CME rule 575 they really cracked down on the spoofing but this is what a spoof looked like on a, on a low time frame uh, and uh, here it is on a high time frame right so you can see very high liquidity layered in here multiple layers 
a very, very high liquidity. And what was the reaction to that? Price sold off. It sold off into, you can even see how long these um, uh, iceberg orders had been laying in the book here. Uh, uh, you can see they started to transact down here and they remained in the book uh, since around 11.30 or so. Uh, and, uh, and they finally got filled at the end of the day here. So, you know, someone really wanted to get filled here and they, they had to spoof uh, the market to get their fill. Uh, end of the day here, we had uh, what, you know, somewhere around uh, 14,000 uh, uh, iceberg transactions. So after seeing something like this kind of activity, after a big down day, uh, you know, we're starting to kind of think, all right, well, now if we can get back up into these ranges up here and we see some buyers, where might price be going? And you'd be looking at some of these like uh, uh, high liquidity areas like 47.20 or 47.30 here. Uh, so let's take a look and see what unfolded. Uh, I don't think it got there. It went up to about 47.10, if I remember correctly. Um, here's here's four o'clock in the S&P. No, it just got up to like 4,700, uh, and then that was it. Is that correct? Hold on a minute. Let me take a quick look. Well, let's take a look on the on the candlestick chart here. So yeah, here is our our close is right around here, 4 p.m. And this doesn't look right either. Um, Oh yeah, no, this is correct. Okay, so 4 p.m. and then uh, yeah, I'm looking at regular trading hours. That's why, or yeah, regular trading hours. So yeah, it only came up to about 47.05. Uh, that was it, right? Now, is it still in play? Uh, so we we can see that uh, at the close here, we've we've even uh, got gotten down below it here. Now this could be a really great trick. Now I know I'm not sure if um, if you guys uh, uh, saw some iceberg uh, transactions. Uh, I just opened up my bookmap. I was uh, in meetings and I also had to download and install a new version here of bookmap. Um, so I'm really curious here. I, I if this dip into here, I, I imagine there's probably thousands of icebergs filled in here. I don't know if you guys can uh, verify that, but I, I'd be uh, assuming this here uh, that uh, there's a lot of people still getting a lot of larger players still getting filled uh, down below the swing here uh, after seeing that big spoof. Uh, and um, uh, anyway, the uh, uh, you know assuming uh, that here. Uh, it also seen some icebergs coming in right now, uh, uh, quite quite a bit, quite a bit. So um, you know, from this point on, uh, on the way down here, I, I see 3,500 icebergs here uh, already. So uh, and, and I just opened my my book map uh, just like 10 minutes ago. So this is pretty massive uh, amount. They're getting filled all the way down, all right? So what we're going to start to look for on a higher time frame uh, view here is start to look at market structure. Uh, and then piece together uh, where price might be going next uh, with the volume and context of the volume uh, and the um, uh, limit buy and sell orders within it. So right now, uh, here's our 930 open, the move to the downside, uh, and then look at the buyers come in here, okay? And they move price up to this swing right here, okay, 830, we had some data. Uh, and then uh, we, we see a move back down on the move down here, the entire way, they're getting filled with iceberg orders. God, I wish I had uh, had uh, opened a book map uh, much earlier and been able to read all of this within here. Uh, anyway, um, I, I didn't, uh, but uh, uh, let's see if we can get uh, buyers to start to come in here, right? And what, what might this scenario look like? Well, we can start to uh, lay out uh, some price structure here. Or outline some price structure and this is what we're looking for right here the buyers like this okay 40 4680 right here uh, has not transacted yet okay so maybe we can transact into it but we're looking for buyers to come in here and move it away and move it away pretty quickly uh, if we can so we, we we're not out of the woods yet here um, just likely just a test back up to the um, 
uh, the swing right here around uh, 4685. Uh, and then maybe we'll get another rotation back down here, etc. However, we might not. We might just get enough buyers in here. They're starting to come in. They're starting to break this here. And it's starting to break it on some size. Okay, So let's see if we can get our move uh, back up into uh, some of these previous swings in here on the higher time frame. This is more of a higher time frame move. Uh, that we're looking for. So the the first move would be up here, just uh, five points uh, up to 46.90, uh, and then if we can get back up into this previous market structure, this area of consolidation here, okay, we're looking for buyers up above 47.90 or 46.90 here. If we can get our buyers up into here, we're looking for 05, uh, which was the high from the overnight session. Uh, and then what about our 20 level? Well, they, they kind of pulled that liquidity. Now they're up here at 30 instead. Okay, so what we're starting to see here is order flow on a much, much higher time frame uh, and starting to uh, piece some of these um, uh, piece or, uh, some of these elements together here. Let's uh, let's take a look here. Maybe I can download more data here and I'll show you that massive spoof. At least I can show the spoof here uh, if I can get the backfill data. So hold on a minute. Okay, and what that looks like. Because this, this is 4 a.m. here. This is the uh, London session or European session. Anyway, you can see the way that the market kind of operates here and understanding larger player activity. Now, we've covered this several times in the past about understanding larger player activity. Uh, it takes a while for them to kind of, you know, uh, uh, turn the ship around and they'll just continue to get filled and filled and filled like on the bid uh, as price, you know, goes against them. Uh, and then to, at a certain point, though, they're there's no more sellers uh, no one's interested in selling so people start buying uh, and then they they uh, uh, pretty quickly go into the green uh, and then price continues to go on up uh, for several days now if you want um, uh, some some insight into that okay thanks Doug so it looks like a, a 2500 at uh, 1005 uh, and then uh, a thousand at 10:08 and uh, 11:60 at um, uh, 10:02. Uh, anything uh, in these areas here, like um, you know, after the the news, uh, or uh, here around 9:30 or so, or just after 9:30, uh, 9:35 or so. Uh, anything you see in there? Here's the big spoof uh, that we're looking at, uh, and uh, let's let's take a look at this here because. Um, uh, just to review it uh, for for you guys uh, uh, cu curious about it and uh, I know it's hindsight here uh, but it was just it's amazing stuff to see uh, and it gives us a lot of insight here I mean look at this layering in now you will see this kind of layering at the close anyway however if you start to zoom out a little bit this just looks so much like um, uh, 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 just a, a massive spoof and it filled all of these iceberg orders on the way down uh, and then uh, price action really didn't go anywhere. It kind of dribbled back on up, but we're not finding new buyers yet. So we come back down, retest these areas yet again, even below it here, uh, and um, uh, still looking for just massive iceberg orders or liquidity getting filled on the bid here. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we can see uh, that, that that is an unfolding in here. Uh, in here, they're absorbing or they're staying in the order book. They're getting filled. You see the transactions into this liquidity and also down here, okay, into that liquidity, okay, right here. Now, this is backfill data, uh, so it's not as accurate. Um, it's uh, uh, kind of like tick data in essence. Uh, however, uh, I've got the data here anyway, so uh, the, the, at least we can take a look at it. We're not going to get very precise with it, but we can take a look at it. Okay, so now what about current price action? Uh, so we were just looking for maybe a move up to 90. Uh, it went up to this swing here uh, and then now has rotated back down and filled this 4680 uh, area here. So watching closely this 4680 level here just dipped below it here as you guys can see 
uh, and we see more iceberg uh, transactions in here We're up to about 4,000 now all right so uh, uh, yeah I'm looking to see if buyers can retest back up here uh, to uh, kind of 4687 here all right so I know we're looking at uh, uh, large dots at a lower low uh, so and, and the trend is still down okay so uh, we we need to keep that in mind here so what what would we be looking for in this scenario then is even more icebergs getting filled on the way down here remember this is a higher time frame outlook here uh, and uh, uh, think about it yourself uh, if you are using uh, limit uh, orders to get filled uh, y you're probably having price move d uh, immediately against you uh, because uh, it has to you have to get filled so uh, it's not going to like hit your tick and immediately go the the opposite direction uh, or hit your hit your order. Uh, if if it does, a lot of times it just leaves you high and dry and, and you don't get filled because you're still waiting in the queue. So de typically, if you want to get filled uh, with a limit order, price immediately goes against you. Uh, so that's what's happening with these iceberg orders as well. Okay, price continues to go against them, but they're getting filled, and then they add in more at lower levels here and they average their cost okay and like like we mentioned it takes a little while here uh, for this to start to turn around uh, and we'd be looking for that though we're looking for that scenario at least uh, and uh, being aware of it here uh, and right now we, we don't see it we're, we're thinking well maybe maybe we can get it in here maybe we come back up into this uh, 4690 we only went to this swing here uh, which was uh, we started to see it in here the, the buyers right uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, I probably would have taken a shot at this here, uh, and I would have been stopped out at break even because I would have been looking for 90. Uh, but um, uh, I would have moved my stop up and, and not have this go against me. Uh, the um, uh, Anyway, we uh, went up to this kind of 87.50 level uh, and uh, this previous swing, and then sellers come right back in. So uh, yet again, though, we're, we're seeing these iceberg transactions. So they are they're still here. Uh, still getting filled in these areas here and price is still going against them as you can see we're still downtrending here okay so what we're looking for in here is instead of seeing these big red dots here uh, and 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 price movement uh, to the to the downside we're going to look for a structure break first uh, and then uh, uh, the um, uh, green dots above that structure Okay. And that will start to confirm uh, the uh, market starting to turn around here. Okay. So that's what we'd be looking for. Uh, but um, uh, and, and waiting and watching here. Okay. So uh, in fact, uh, if you, you know, there's a, a few different ways to kind of look at these, um, these areas here and, and consider, uh, uh, you know, various um, uh, strategies. Uh, it's, it's kind of deadly. Uh, be, you have to be really kind of careful because, as you as you guys know, the trend continues to go, uh, and we're looking for that that structure to break first. Uh, however, uh, you can kind of jump in really quickly here and try to trade it back up to where it broke from. It's a counter trend trade, and like I said, um, uh, it may turn into a bigger one, but it's 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 um, it's tricky. It's very tricky. It is easier to just go with the trend. Uh, and uh, uh, just uh, get in and hold and, and wait and watch until you see something. So here, here we see something, for example. Now, not looking for much here, right? But we see some selling here, lack of selling, buying coming in, looking for a move back up to this 46.80. That's it, though, for right now, just that. Okay, let's see if we can get that. Okay, and the reason being... Uh, is we see some selling here and a lack of selling. Okay, but see, you can see what's happening. We're coming back down and, and we, we're going to get our sellers here. So they are going to break it lower. So this, this is tricky, uh, uh, you know, this kind of double bottom pattern here. Uh, we, we really need to see the volume pick up in this area here for it to carry it back up into uh, these previous areas. Okay, so uh, yeah, this one, uh, just to even get a move back up to 46.80, uh, it couldn't even do that. Uh, what we'd be looking for is the big green dots in this area here, okay? And and then they'd be able to pull it back up. All right, so uh, this is looking a little different here. Let's let's take a look here. Higher liquidity up at this level here. Look at the buying coming in, okay? Now I think we're going to get our move at least up to here. Uh, this little structure we we're just looking at, but I think we can also get up to 4680 here. 
uh, the buying pressure is looking much better. See the distinction? See the difference here? Now, we've already gotten to this range here. I'm still looking for the buyers to try to press it up into 46.80. Okay, that's where the sellers are. They're up here. Okay, so now we have we have we broke this little structure here. Uh, we want to break this one up here, 4680. Uh, right now we're just looking for a move to 4680, and there we go. Okay, now what's the order flow look like up here? Look at them pull at 4680, and look at them on the bid now. Uh, one large player uh, potentially spoofing here. Uh, showing very high liquidity and uh, uh, trying to get price to uh, potentially maybe uh, their goal here is to get price to, to uh, accept higher. Uh, looking for buyers now. Looking for buyers to reach back up into this swing or this liquidity here. Okay, at uh, uh, 46.82. Next level would be this kind of 46.83 or, or 4 up here. Okay, so uh, you know here here's our dynamic, and we're, we're not out of the woods yet. I mean, we are still in a downtrend. Let's zoom out. But you see how we're coming back up and starting to test these areas here. This is where the structure needs to break, though. Okay, on a higher time frame, this is where the structure needs to break. So let's go over it. What this is kind of uh, uh, you know what, what this is about here, um, in terms of smaller structure and larger structure. Okay. Smaller structure is this one, this this downtrend here. It was broken here. Okay. You can see the trend line break, but then you can see this horizontal line and swing break. And that's why we're looking for it to come back up into uh, 4680 and then uh, uh, 80, uh, 82. And then maybe maybe we can now get a break up into 84. But look look at uh, up here uh, at the structure around this kind of 82-ish, 82 and a half uh, area. Um, we're not breaking it. We're not even seeing a lot of buyers up here. Okay, so we're still in a downtrend on this time frame. Okay, you can see it went right to that uh, uh, that area. In fact, okay. So uh, you know, starting to understand market structure and then the volume within the market structure. Okay, now we're looking for, um, and we're, we're talking about two different kind of time frames here. Uh, and let's let's go over like uh, who's in control in these two different time frames, and the the bigger picture is the the um, where we kind of started this webinar uh, of looking at these icebergs, uh, looking for the potential for the move back up into higher levels, uh, and we just haven't seen it yet. All right? We're we're still kind of waiting and watching for that scenario uh, to unfold. We're we're aware of it, um, but uh, uh, anyway. Uh, looking at who's in control in specific areas. Well, buyers took control here, right? They, they, they went above this structural area okay, at the open, uh, and they went above the swing here as well. Uh, and look at the buyers come in, right? So they are able to move uh, price quite a bit higher, just shy of 4,700, uh, and then it fails. And then where did sellers come in? Well, we can talk, start to look at when the, the big selling came in and move price. Uh, we have a big pivot point here uh, for the day. This is going to be an important level, uh, in fact, and it's this area right here. Okay, The swing here at the, uh, at the open, in fact, 930. Um, and uh, now it's kind of a range uh, that we're kind of looking at. It's, it's somewhere like something like this or even up here. Uh, it's kind of a... a a, a wonky uh, kind of range here uh, that uh, uh, is not not too precise but let's take a look at the structure nonetheless this is where the buyers came in and moved it uh, it bounced off of this area here where liquidity was uh, and then went higher again this is where sellers came in and they dropped it below that into where it broke out from here okay, this is where the sellers came in this is where sellers are taking control Okay, we get a little retest here, uh, and then we see sellers still taking control. Buyers come up, make an equal high, and the buying volume is not bad in here. But the sellers rotate it back in and still taking this lower. Okay, so now uh, let's take a look at what's going on down here now. We know sellers are in control from this time frame on up. 
where are the buyers starting to take control? Well, I don't see them taking control yet. Okay, I don't see uh, sellers are still in control in this move. Okay, but we're looking for that scenario. Uh, so uh, uh, you know you can still stick with this trend uh, and uh, and look for lower areas. However, uh, starting to look at this is you can see that we made an equal low here and kind of an equal high here. So our structure is starting to kind of you know it, it's going from downtrend to sideways right now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the order flow within this double bottom pattern here and this structure. Okay, so let's just outline it. Okay, this structure here. All right, and we're looking for buyers above it. Okay, we, we're breaking the trend line now. We're looking for big green dots in here, 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 and here, and move this market back on up. The first test uh, will... Yeah, I'd be looking for it to move up to like maybe 86 or this kind of swing here at 80, 88 uh, up here. Okay, and uh, you can see that uh, we're, we're, we're not quite ready yet. You can see that uh, uh, we're not getting those big green dots in these areas here, right? So we're kind of transitioning from downtrend to sideways trend right now. But we're watching the order flow within this sideways uh, consolidation here. Okay, where, where, who's taking control or who is in control in this structure? Well, we can see it's pretty equal. Buyers, sellers, buyers. Now, let's see, can we get our buyers back up here again? And maybe we can get a breakout. If we don't and we start to see sellers down around here, I, I would imagine, um, we're going to get the move lower back down into the low here, uh, 46.75 or so. So we're kind of looking for these two scenarios here. And the order flow will give us um, some insight. Okay, we see the sellers starting to come in. Uh, and they're going to try to, you know, test it down into these areas here. It's pretty equal in here right now. I don't see anyone really taking control in here. Uh, do, do you guys, under, or is that is that kind of clear? Do you understand what I mean uh, by who's taking control in some of these areas and looking at the pressures of the volume within this? This was a, a question uh, I think uh, BP Rules had um, uh, uh, some some uh, some days ago uh, about understanding volume pressures within a structure, and, and this is it here. Let's let's in fact let's uh, kind of delete some of these things so we can see it a little bit clearer. Okay, within this consolidation structure, uh, we're looking to see who who is in control, and we don't see it right. So it makes sense that we continue to go sideways here. Okay. So we, we, we see the, the sellers taking control, taking control, taking control, and we get the downtrend. Now we're, we're looking at kind of buyers and sellers equaling each other here. And let's see if the sellers try to pick it up here. They could. And they could break this. Now they've got to break it on size. Okay, so we're watching. Yeah, they've got the size here. Now they're getting filled here though. Right? So we're going to watch this carefully because this could be a false breakdown. Okay, it just broke down by a tick or two and you already see buyers coming back in. All right, if that's the case, can they reach back up to this liquidity here at 46.80? Let's continue to uh, edit some of these drawings here, get rid of them. Okay, so we're just about at 46.80, back into the range. This is a false breakdown. All right, now the question here is, the, the, what's the kind of most traded level in this range here? Well, we're right at it right now, 46.80. What we're going to look for is um, larger uh, buyers, you know, big green dots above that area here. We want to see more liquidity also maybe on the on the bid here. And we want to see maybe these guys at 83 starting to pull that liquidity and adding it higher. Okay, this is when we, we can look for that scenario to break out of this range if we can get enough of the buyers in here. 
and you can see that it's still the buying starting to pick up a little bit in here a little bit more buying than selling uh, than than the selling down here for example okay so are we there yet no uh, but we're starting to kind of watch this in fact we made a lower high even with this more buying in here okay so look at see this little area here for at, at 46.78 and we're seeing selling down below it okay, this is where we see mo most of that buying coming in okay so sellers if they can get below this area here this would be kind of trapped volume and we'd be looking to verify that with a stop run to the downside okay we're still kind of waiting and watching here and okay, so uh, in fact uh, we're back up above this little area here this is going to be a kind of a critical little area for this little time frame we're looking at right now okay buyers back up above it all right buyers you should be able to move it then back up into and break this little swing and back up into uh, this kind of 81 liquidity let's see it okay they're they're above that uh, this line here Uh, good morning, Alan. <laughs> well, you were busy making stupid trades, okay. Yeah, we're, we're kind of like, uh, we went from this kind of downtrend in, in you know, the smaller time frame here uh, to kind of sideways. Uh, and then now we're starting to look at the structure as well. Um, the structure on this is is bearish uh, still. It went kind of from sideways to, to a little bit bearish here. Here's why. Lower high and a lower low. So it's starting to kind of shift. In fact, we can look for sellers to try to take it here. They're below the little swing that we just uh, at, at the 78 level here. So let's see if we can get our sellers in here. And we need to see quite a bit. Uh, and then we'd be looking for 75 and... Uh, uh, 73 and then maybe even 70 uh, transact uh, good morning David no problem glad you could make it all right so uh, buyers came in they're still kind of testing and, and um, uh, kind of uh, fighting um, uh, battling at this uh, kind of level here we're looking for uh, uh, someone to take control here and they're we're not quite seeing it yet again massive icebergs let's see how massive oh, it's not that big this was pretty big over here though all right sellers you you've got it now you've got it if you want it let's see it 75 73 70 let's see if they can push it Right, structure is telling us that uh, we sh we'd be looking for that. Just it's and it's not that much of a hand uh, or a tip, uh, because like a, a a tip of the hand here, because like a, we we slightly made a, a lower a lower low and slightly made a lower high here. Okay, so the structure is telling us now we're looking for volume pressure on the sell side to continue uh, with the trend, and we're waiting and watching here. All right, so they should be able to do it on this rotation here. Let's see it, sellers, and push it into the 75 here. And they should be able to trade through it, too. And let's see it, sellers. Nothing, nothing yet. No, no, no insight at all, I uh, quite yet. Just a small little range here of three ticks. Okay, here comes some selling. OK, 
Okay. Now we're getting buyers starting to come in. They're trying to lift it. Now, be careful with this kind of buying here. This is this is why exactly why to be careful with it. Now we're getting our move. Right. So the way to kind of not, not get kind of fooled or duped by that buying that just came in like this is did they break the structure? Right. We're still in this downtrend. We're still making lower lows here in, in this little structure in here. Um, we're still making lower lows and uh, and lower highs. Even this move here to 77. It only came up to here. It didn't. It didn't even uh, retest some of these areas in here, right? Even though we see nice little kind of cluster of buying that came in, we rotate right back down and we get our sellers that we're looking for, and they're able to finally break it here. And we can also put together. This is a stop run. This is a stop run we're looking for. Uh, here it is. It verifies it. So these traders that try to buy off of this area, or were buying in here, or in any of these areas in here. Are getting stopped out so uh, uh, we can we can see it here we know we, with our MBO data uh, all right so now let's take a look back here uh, and continue to, to uh, uh, look at this here more sellers back down into our 72 area still looking for 70 here to transact let's see here 70 and then maybe even 65 here you know so you can see like uh, we're kind of going through these different scenarios in here and trying to get an understanding of the order flow. In the end, we I mean, we started off looking for, um, you know, due to the icebergs, et cetera, and uh, also due to this uh, massive kind of spoof yesterday uh, and uh, and lots of icebergs getting filled down below at the at the close, uh, you know, kind of looking for, you know, the potential for a move back up uh, and so we're looking for that potential and the order flow was telling us here no we're still making kind of lower highs and lower lows and we're looking and we know sellers are still in control we're looking to see buyers break this 82 level so uh you know on our on our lower uh time frames uh you can you can kind of see how these markets are fractal so we did break this trend here we saw the buyers break this little structure here so we're looking forward to come back up and test this structure and that's what it did okay so there's your kind of uh, counter trend trade uh, but uh, did it break the bigger structure no okay. and now we're looking we're still you can see how it's still nicely holding uh, the the, uh, the trend here okay so now we're down into our 70 level okay that's what we're looking for for this move to break into uh, liquidity down into these areas here and there's still no reason to think differently at this point okay if we if we get maybe some exhaustion in here we'd be looking for a counter trend trade let's go over it uh, quickly okay so again uh, kind of structure here uh, looking for a counter trend trade and then uh, looking for the move back up to where it dropped from here we're already there uh, and uh, and then maybe back up into 75 level up here Okay, and then it, we're going to have to see if it can break that structure uh, here. Okay, so there's our move. It's already back up at 75. That was quick. And let's zoom out. Let's get our bigger picture perspective. Uh, this move too, even though like pretty strong volume on the buy side uh, and, and a nice move back up to here. Uh, however, it's a low volume pullback at this point. More sellers in here and uh, less buyers here. Now, low volume pullbacks are usually good entries for continuation to the downside. We have to be kind of careful uh, of uh, the low volume pullbacks when you're at the bottom of a, a, of a downtrend, for example. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the reason being is like, even though this is a low volume pullback, to where it dropped from here if you get the buyers up above this area here it doesn't matter you're looking for size above it and they're just to move it away from this whole zone down here you're looking for them to move it away and move it away on size uh, so we're looking for that scenario as well and you have to be kind of careful uh, because yeah you can get massive short squeezes uh, to the upside and all of this volume down here uh, is uh, is 
they're they're forced they're compelled to be buyers uh, on the way up okay so we're still kind of uh, looking and waiting and watching for that um, break of that otherwise you can see that the low volume pullback here uh, continued with the trend All right this little little tricky in here uh, but uh, and and where could you look for uh, the potential move? Well, basically below here, uh, you can see this kind of went up to it, kind of paused, went up again. Then the sellers came in down in here. You know, I, I don't think it gives us much insight here. Uh, to be honest, we want to see big red dots pulling that market lower, and we're not. We're not. So you know, the continuation on the trend here, or trying to enter into this, uh, it's not giving me much insight. Um, uh, we're not really seeing that that volume in here confirm this move to the downside. We're just kind of going with the market structure and the trend here. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so we're still trending. Okay, now we can also start to look at again um, where this structure. Uh, in this trend uh, uh, it may break uh, and right here's a good one at, at this 72 level here I'm sure it's not going to ne necessarily break but we're looking we'd be looking for a pullback to this uh, here okay, if we get buyers starting to come in Again, this is these are your counter trend trades, but uh, uh, and we're looking for the potential for a reversal. Uh, but b before we do that, we're just we're looking for that potential. We're still going with the trend uh, to the downside. Okay, we're looking for that, and here we got our break, we got our pullback, and we got trend continuation. And now we're down at almost this six um, forty six sixty five area here. Okay. What about 4660 and also 4650 down here? Okay, so still trending lower. Uh, still seeing massive icebergs as well. Not massive. Um, the big icebergs were here. So it bodes pretty well for a move back up into this 4690 here if we can get, if we can find our buyers in here and we will at some point you know else just we're waiting and watching else just you know stick stick with the trend and let this play out. Uh, we can go over a little bit of trade management in here. I know it's hindsight, but uh, um, the uh, you know if we're looking for this breakdown and we're looking for those sellers to come in, uh, you know I, I typically kind of enter somewhere around here because I'm I'm waiting and watching. I'm looking for the confirmation of the sellers to move it away. Uh, due to the structure and then the order flow within the structure which really didn't tip its hand until here uh, and uh, we we're just looking at structure uh, once we started to see that in here we're looking for those sellers uh, now we've got something they're moving it away they're moving away on size so let's say your entry was in here somewhere uh, I like to take partial profits along the way into areas of high liquidity or front running that high liquidity uh, and then move my stop to break even if I did that I would have been stopped out here at break even, right? So there's ways to manage uh, some of your trading activity here. You know, these these uh, um, markets re, uh, rotate back uh, uh, to where they drop from here. And this is where, you know, Scott talks about it uh, and we've talked about it for years that uh, uh, think of all the traders that are kind of stuck in here, you know, and they're, they're long. Well, they're going to be sellers if they can get price back up here. And, and they're going to be thanking uh, their lucky stars that I can get out at a good price level. And that's the selling that starts to come back in. All right. So uh, anyway, the um, uh, ways to consider to av avoid getting stopped out here uh, is let's suppose 
I, I know I've covered this um, several times in, in the past, so um, just bear with me, guys. Um, yeah, trend is your friend until it breaks your heart. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But, uh, you know, you, you can start to look for it, uh, um, the, um, uh, you know, potential for those reversals. Uh, it really kind of hits you over the head uh, when you finally get it um, and, and you see it. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, the... Um, uh, Hold on just a minute. Yeah, so suppose you got in here looking for this break, uh, and then you took your partial profit down here. Okay, so I'm just going to make two similar squares, and then let's edit them here. So you took your partial profit. This is what you got. If we put this on top of the other one, this is where your stop loss could be after you've taken, let's say you get out in two legs. One leg down here, the other is like uh, you're still in it, or you can place your stop up here. And this would be your overall break even. So, you know, it, it's giving you a lot more leeway here. Now, if you get stopped out up here, you didn't make any money on the trade whatsoever. You took some profit here, but then you took a loss on the way back up here that would equal out to zero. Uh, and you'd be at break even. You can, you know, maybe make this one a little bit more shallow, uh, and then you'd make maybe, you know, up for your commissions and, and um, a tick or two or something. Uh, so you'd have a, a very uh, small uh, uh, profit. Um, but uh, that's that's something to consider uh, for trade management. It's up to you. Uh, if you did that, you'd still be in this basically. Uh, and uh, you know, why why would you get out? You don't see any reason yet. You don't see price structure broke. Uh, breaking yet uh, in any of these areas here so uh, there would be no reason at this point okay he you're looking at the cues with doug Yeah, so still going down. Uh, no reason to get out. Okay, let's start to look at uh, micro trends here and, and maybe potential pullbacks. So we're really kind of getting in the nitty gritty here on some of these uh, micro trends and bigger trends. Bigger trend is still holding holding uh, absolutely nicely here. Just, just beautiful. Okay, let's take a look at some of the smaller trends. Okay, you can look at maybe something like, whoops, not that. Boy, this is starting to get kind of messy. You know, here. Okay, or even this kind of trend here. Trend channel, as you can see, is, is holding pretty nicely. Okay, all right. So let, what about a counter trend then? Um, what, what would that look like here? All right, well, let's see. We'd be looking for buyers... Uh, just right around here, okay, where it broke from. We, we already got the retest here, uh, and we're not seeing buyers, so we're kind of in this sm small micro trend here. We went from downtrend to sideways now. Okay, now look at liquidity came in here at 62, and we're kind of uh, heading down toward it. So we're still finding sellers in here, uh, still interested uh, in this liquidity here. Okay. We'd be looking for this micro trend to break, though, and we're looking for buyers uh, in this area here. Okay, uh, just just around 60, uh, just shy of 64, 63 and three quarters. Okay, sellers take it lower. So we we didn't get any sort of pullback here. Uh, well, we did very very shallow. It's but it stayed with this trend here, as you guys can see. Okay, down to 60. Okay. All right, let's see liquidity here at 59 and three quarters. Here's the reaction, some buyers, not much. Okay. Sellers take it lower. So uh, even going kind of exponential here, uh, in fact, 
So we can even redraw our trend. And we're, we're looking for maybe a, a, a quick counter trend trade just because uh, we want to cover what, you know, uh, what that might look like here. Uh, bigger picture, though, there's no reason to get out of this uh, to the downside. Just we're trying to go through as many examples as we can here so that you guys can understand what the reversals might look like uh, and um, uh, when you might get these moves back up into uh, some of these uh, areas here. So, yeah, let's see if we can trade into this liquidity here at 55 and then see some buying coming in. I want to see the buying right here at 56 and three quarters. Let's see if we get that. Look at this little uh, kind of spoof underneath here. You'll see this every, almost every time. Um, not necessarily a spoof, but see how like the the just completely narrow range in here uh, of like two or three ticks, but high liquidity on the offer, trying to press price into uh, 55 here. And there we go. So they they were successful. Look at the icebergs picking up underneath as well. So this little area, one tick in front of that liquidity. Now we're looking for buyers here. Okay, now we should get the move back up into 50. Uh, let's just call it 58. And we're looking for this counter trend trade here. Here we go. Okay, and we're still in a big downtrend, but we're looking for this counter trend trade back up into these areas, 59. Uh, maybe maybe even 60 or 59 yeah 60 here okay see see how they're taking control on a smaller much smaller time frame here here's our double bottom pattern okay sellers lack of selling buyers buyers up here at where where it matters and 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 some size here so now let's see if we can get a little bit more here and they should be able to press it up into 59 here Okay, a little on the bid here as well. What's the reaction? Do we find our buyers here? They're pulling now. So, yeah, not getting too much. Okay, here we go. Now let's see if we can get our buyers and let's see if we can get our 59 here. Okay, and remember, we're still in a downtrend. Okay, this is just a small um, uh, retest or... Uh, well, in fact, a low volume pullback uh, to some of these liquidity. There's our 60. Okay, just shy of it. Or did it? No, it traded. It traded. 43 uh, traded into 60. All right. So anyway, uh, so there's an example. Now, is this, this is your counter trend trade. Uh, you know, like I said, these are, are very, um, can be very tricky. Uh, we're still in a downtrend, so you know consider taking some profits on 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 these kinds of uh, uh, of these trades here. And then and then uh, you know if you're looking for a maybe a bigger move though, you really have to zoom out and you really have to look at the bigger picture. Okay, did we trade into a bigger level? Look at the bigger trend here. I mean, my God, the icebergs are just they continue to add up here um, uh, below these areas here. And they seem to be happy uh, to get filled in these areas here. So I'm looking for a really nice move. Uh, maybe maybe it has to unfold next week. Okay, like like we had covered this, and I, I keep harping uh, and mentioning it. Um, the um, uh, let's find it here. All right, on our YouTube channel, How uh, we were looking, it, it's this the video down here, um, selected webinars from the 20th. Uh, we saw massive icebergs and then the, the move higher, uh, multi-day move higher. So, it, it, you know, um, uh, after all of those iceberg transactions, and what did that look like on the higher time frame? It's here. Uh, this is the daily here. Hold on a minute. So it was it was down here. It was this swing here, and it led to all-time highs. You know, five five-day rally. Okay, big big candles, big green candles as well. We're looking for something similar now here. Okay, we're not quite there yet, uh, but we're watching and waiting for it. Uh, and why are we looking at it in here? I mean, you you volume profile guys. Where is your high volume uh, uh, node in here? 
Uh, where is your point of control? Probably around here, right? Probably around this uh, 40, 4650 area, I would imagine. Okay, Doug, you say the, the, the spot gamma level is 4655. Yep, so Doug's looking at, you know, Doug's trading options or he's using options uh, gamma levels uh, as um, uh, his higher time frame kind of outlook. Uh, I can show you guys the, uh, if you haven't seen his webinar, uh, this is where you can find it as well on our YouTube channel. Um, under Pro Trader Webinars, it's right here, Doug. Okay. Uh, also, Tom did one uh, last, uh, well, it was, was, I think, three weeks ago, December. Uh, and uh, it, Tom will be streaming here very shortly uh, in uh, doing the same kind of streaming that I'm doing right now. Uh, he, he'll be doing it um, in uh, uh, his, uh, his, his trader lab room uh, here in, uh, in Discord. All right. So anyway, guys, like uh, just want to show you just how important it is to start to understand uh, some of these icebergs and and some of these absorption levels in here uh, and and the moves that can unfold on these higher time frames. Uh, Alan, do you have a, your um, hi, a higher time frame, like your daily uh, chart here and your um, point of control? I'm really curious uh, what it is. I, I would imagine it's somewhere around here. Okay, uh, Brent called out the support level uh, in the AM as well. Okay, had Brent's almost like a deity, huh? Yeah, we can take a look at the S and P around uh, ten fifty two. Sure. 4680. Okay, not on the high, not on the five minute, um, Alan, but on the um, uh, what, what do you have on the daily chart? Like if you looked at uh, this this chart here, like this cluster of volume in here, uh, where's your your high volume um, node in here? I mean, just by looking at the price action in here, I would imagine it's somewhere up in here. Just kind of makes sense to me. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of uh, um, speculating on that. But, uh, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, maybe there's some big volume down in here, and, and maybe it's down further. Anyway, you're looking for maybe a potential bounce off of that area. Okay, that's why we noticed yesterday large uh, icebergs at the close, and then now we're below it here, and we're still seeing... Uh, you know some some large icebergs down here. Okay, so we're we're still looking for that scenario here. Here's here's where we we came from here. Uh, this is yesterday's close. Look at the action yesterday. Just just horrible. I mean back and forth in here. Uh, but uh, nice nice big uh, spoofing type of activity right here. I mean, God, this just looks great. Um, uh, and uh, uh, this is what it used to look like. We'd, we'd be looking at like your five minute chart or something like that and, and uh, you'd see these blocks here of uh, layering of uh, liquidity and then the spoof into uh, your iceberg down here um, so the uh, yeah let's continue to, to look at current price action okay all right all right, so we saw this exponential move. We saw the break of it. We're looking for the pullback to this 4660. That has unfolded. It's gone even higher now. It's gone up into this area, but we are still in a downtrend. Okay, it's getting kind of, uh, it's testing these levels up here, but we're still in a downtrend. Okay, now what about the buying in here compared to the selling over here? Eh, you know, it's it's not it, it, nothing great, nothing great yet. Now, what we can look for, this is really getting kind of messy, so let's clear them all. Um, what we're looking for, though, is a move back up above here or here on big volume on, on the um, buy side here. Okay, so here they come. They're going to try to test it and trade into and through this area here. 
Let's see if they can do it. We're looking for big buying here and to move price away from this area here. Okay, here we go. Now, we got some, some buy volume up above, up above the swing here. That's good. Okay, we need to see more though. Okay, it's already pulled back to the to the top of this range. We need to see more buyers in here. Okay, if we get that, we should see it move through this liquidity at 66 and then on up into 69 and 70. Let's see if we get it now. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're watching. Uh, and let's see if we get maybe a move back up here. Okay, back up to 65. Okay, bouncing off of where it kind of broke out from. And nope, we didn't get that. And we wouldn't have gotten involved in that either. Uh, we didn't see buyers in here. Yeah, I agree with you, Doug, on this. Um, uh, buying icebergs have been executing all the way down. Uh, seems to be typical of larger larger traders. Uh, buying weakness and selling strength. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, this is what I think it just gets really interesting. Uh, with the transparency that we're getting into these markets now is pretty amazing to be able to see icebergs like this um, and then integrate that into our trading. Uh, so if we know that you know, larger players are getting filled like all the way down and they're buying all the way down. Like at a certain point, the aggressors are going to give us some insight to the move and the reversal for the move back up. And that's what we're kind of looking for. And that's what we started this webinar off uh, talking about yesterday's tweet and this in here. Uh, and you can see that none of that has unfolded yet. And they're still buying Okay, now, uh, Doug, if you have a cumulative volume uh, delta um, uh, uh, output here for your icebergs, uh, I, I don't know what time maybe you opened up the market, but uh, I would imagine you're probably up around, you know, 15,000 or something since I'm a, I, I opened at 10 o'clock and I have already almost uh, 10,000 here. 15, maybe 20,000. I mean, I imagine there was quite a bit of iceberg buying in here and then also in here. Oh yeah, okay. So you're you're at negative uh, uh, twenty one, negative twenty one, or no 21,000. No, should be positive number. So it's you're over twenty thousand. Yeah, and we can also look at you know the the fourteen thousand uh, that that uh, transacted at the close yesterday as well. So we're, we're seeing a lot and when we know that now we just haven't seen the order flow change yet. I mean, you can see like, you, you know, we're looking for that break in here uh, and then the break kind of above our, our, you know, 65 level. We, we did break this little swing here. It, it failed. Uh, it's a failed breakout and the sellers came right back in and we still know we're in a downtrend here. We we're just looking for a retest back up into these areas here. Okay, we can see very nicely holding this trend line. Okay, and uh, all this did was kind of break the, the top of the little range and trade right back down into it and break the bottom of this little range here as well. Okay, so uh, uh, nice, Doug. So since six, 640, you have icebergs uh, and you're showing 21,500. Uh, Excellent. Thank you. I mean, think about it here. Like, you know, and we're, we're speculating on this, but we're going to try to, the backstory, um, uh, we want to understand these, uh, these markets as an auction. And think about if larger players are getting filled all the way down, at a certain point, it's in their interest to kind of tip their hand and say, like, it's time to buy, right? And we're looking for that. And we're going to look for larger 
uh, uh, buyers here to move it away from these previous value areas. Okay, right here. Can they move it away? What that scenario is going to look like okay, is a lower high, uh, um, a higher low, uh, and a and a higher high, and then our big green dots. Okay, we want to see more liquidity on the on the uh, bid and then pulling on the offer here. So let's see if we can get that scenario right now. See the buying coming in? Okay, now we need to break this area here at 65 on big uh, green dots here. Okay, are we getting it? Yeah, starting to do it. Great. Where might it go next? We're looking for uh, 46.70. Okay, this little area here, and there's liquidity there as well. Okay, now look what we're starting to break now too. We're breaking this higher time frame trend line. And we're trading up here where there was previous buying that kind of broke the trend a little bit here. Or I'm sorry, broke the little structure here. Okay, so starting to look pretty good. Okay, uh, now we're looking for, uh, I would love to see this liquidity here pull and add higher up into about here. It's just starting to come in at this kind of uh, 61 and a quarter area. And I want to see these guys at 66. I want to see them pull. Here we go. All right, here's here's that little uh, uh, scenario starting to unfold. Here they are on the bid. I want to see them pull on the offer. And we're looking for our big green dots here. Okay, it looks like these markets are getting ready to move. Now, let's add in another confluence here. Okay, we're starting to, we're kind of putting the pieces together. We're looking at our structure. This is a really good one. Let's look at correlated markets. How's the NASDAQ looking? Well, it's already broken it. Okay, how's the Russell looking? Eh, the Russell's kind of struggling to break it here, but it's starting to do it. Now it's pulling back. Okay, so another rotation might be in order here. Maybe we're not quite ready yet. Yeah, and the S&P starting to pull back now too. Okay, but we're starting to kind of note though, uh, you know, that the these these markets might be getting ready for this move now. Okay, so let's start to maybe look for uh, a, a bigger trend reversal and what that might look like. Yeah, let's get rid of these dots here. Okay. So how many of you guys in here are, are pattern traders? Uh, you're not looking at uh, market and volume profile. I know that a lot of you are, um, but uh, you're looking at patterns, like your your um, reversal patterns, continuation patterns, like your maybe your bear and bull flags would be your continuation pattern. Uh, maybe you're looking at reversal patterns like double bottoms or head and shoulders, etc. Okay, whatever it is, like um, what we're looking for is the order flow within the pattern. It's the order flow that makes up that pattern. And it's the auction that makes up that pattern. And this is why they repeat. The, the auction uh, of where buyers and sellers are, are getting involved and, um, uh, and getting stopped out and compelled to buy and sell. Okay, well, we, we drew up our, our reversal uh, trend line here and look look at uh, what's happening coming in at 60 here, liquidity. Okay, well, all right, so now let's see if we can get, are we going to get buyers in here? Buyers already pulled it back to where it broke from here, as you can see. See, sellers, here's your here's your little, little miniature uh, uh, bear flag here. Sellers, sideways consolidation sellers okay. 
Okay, now down into that liquidity, it transacted. These guys did stay in the book. All right, so we're getting some more insight here. Now, if this is going to hold, we need to see buyers back up above it here, right around this 60 level here. Okay, if we can get that, we should get a move right back to 62. Okay, here they come. Now we're looking for them to continue on up 62. Liquidity is coming in around 63, which makes sense too. This is kind of where it broke down from. Okay, here we go. There's our move, 62. Okay, now I had a little back and forth in here, but here, very hitting us on the top of the head here for this little counter trend move here. We're looking for this here on the higher time frame, right? Okay, now looking good. Let's see, I want to see them take it all the way back up to 65 here. Buying pressure looks pretty good. It's not bad. And I want to see it move up here to 65. Okay, and let's see if we can then break out and, see, and get massive buying up here at 65. Okay, so again, looking at this, we're looking at uh, trend lines here. Okay, so the bigger pattern here we're looking at are different trend lines. I'm starting to understand order flow around these trend lines and why these trend lines work. Okay, it's no it's no different than sideways consolidation it's just on a diagonal okay pull back where it where it uh, broke out from makes sense right you know that uh, we would potentially get a pull back up into here because sellers drop it consolidation drop it again and we got a pull back to this area so now we're just looking to see if we can get buyers back up here yet again uh, if we do and uh, at this point here uh, they should be able to break it I would imagine okay and then we'd be looking for the move to 65 here yep so far, so good. I like it. We should get the move up here to 63. I'm looking for it. And then looking 63 and a half, 63 and a quarter. And then I'm looking for them to break it up into 65 here. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see exhaustion up here. We want to see buyers. So we got another rotation. We're starting to find a little bit of buying up here. Not a whole lot, though. Not a whole lot. So this might fail. Got to get our buyers here. Okay, retest back. Come on, buyers, one more retest back up where we should get them. And then we're looking for, well, we were looking for 65 earlier. Uh, now we're looking for this 63 and three quarters. That's where the liquidity is. So basically top of the range here, where this kind of top of the range of also this little bear flag on this counter trend move here. Okay, here they come. All right, so now we're looking for 63 and three quarters. Can't do it. Even they even made a lower high here, and we're making a lower low here. All right, so this might be this might this structurally like a, this is still holding. Um, uh, it's getting kind of kind of iffy though right now. Uh, if we can get if we get down below this 57 area here and uh, and we see sellers here, this this is 
uh, this kind of s small um, uh, uh, break here, uh, looking for the kind of reversal pattern here, this is going to fail. We're, we're kind of waiting, and, and, and the cluster looks good up here. We're just looking for one more move up here in the higher time frame and then the break of it. Because we did break the, the, uh, the trend line, and we did break this little high here as well. Okay, on some buy volume. Yeah, here we go. So we're down below the swing here at 57. Okay, we're going to see a nice stop run too down into this area here, 54. Okay, and likely hit 50, the figure here. So yeah, this is uh, looking for that counter or that uh, reversal is uh, uh, failing here. Okay, we're pulling for it, but uh, we didn't we didn't see the higher high here. B buying looks good in here. It would not it, it's got to reach up here. And then it, when we started to see sellers down here and they're starting to break the the trend, we're, or I'm sorry, break the structure. All right, so the structure is here at 59, and we're starting to see sellers below it. Uh, thanks, David. Yeah, European close coming up. We'll always get some volatility during that time. We did, did we just make an equal low here? Let's take a look. Yeah, kind of. Okay, be, I'd be really careful on this. Uh, we see the buyers starting to come in here, but uh, very, very careful on this. Uh, it, it, we don't want to see buying here. We want to see it up here uh, for this structure to break. Um, yeah, we could look for maybe a counter trend move, like I said, uh, like we did in some of these others, uh, back up to kind of where it broke from here, around 60, for example. Uh, we could even trade back up to 63 here. But really need to see the, the pickup of volume. At, even at 63, it needs to pick up quite a bit to, to make it back up into uh, uh, this swing here around 66, 65, 66. Volume looks good here. However, structure is still holding to the downside. So we want to be very careful about that. Right? Think about all the buyers that just that just came in here. And we know that uh, there's not many stops in here. And we know that this is new buying. It's, there's not icebergs in here either. So if if what if the sellers get down below here? All those buyers like are, are at a loss. They're going to be sellers. Uh, exiting their position, we would look for and anticipate a stop run uh, back down into 50 here. Okay. So uh, just going through these different scenarios here, we're waiting and watching to see if those unfold. We were looking at, um, I forget who uh, who was reaching out yesterday. Um, let's see here. We got it in the chat. So 
the one yesterday was talking about market structure. It's just music to our ears. Um, yeah, I don't see them. Uh, Vince, it was Vince, yeah. Vince Valentine. Uh, yeah, uh, again, like you know, just just, just kind of reiterating, like a uh, uh, talking about market structure and how important it is. Like, you know, we we weren't sure about this move. Now it's looking much much better, right? That we're looking for our buyers in here. Okay, and we still need to be kind of careful here. So here they go. They're going for it. They're going for this sixty six level here. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, we we could we could get it here. Um, it's kind of odd to trade down into into 50 yet. It could be advertising uh, to try to you know get a lot of people on board, break this by um, a bit here, then rotate back down and rotate to 50. Uh, however, like we just got to go with what we read in the order flow. Look at the buying coming in. This is pretty strong. Okay, now we're looking for a buy volume up here at 65. Great. Let's see if they should be able to break it then. We see the pressure coming in here. Uh, we've been looking at all of these icebergs in here. Uh, and uh, let's see if they should be able to break 65 here. Okay. And where would it go next? We'd be looking for, yeah, maybe up to here, you know, somewhere around this 75 level. Okay, looking for them. Uh, let's see, David, your question. Uh, when you see block trades coming in on the CME, um, does this get added into the icebergs? Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, that doesn't matter. The aggressor doesn't matter for an iceberg. Um, the, um, uh, the iceberg order is just resting. Um, and uh, the, the, the portion, the visible portion of it will trade. Uh, and then once it trades, it immediately sends the next portion. So suppose there's an iceberg order in the S&P here of 1,000. And let's suppose like the first um, uh, kind of uh, tranche of it is, is 100. So you'll see an iceberg order of 100 fill, and we'll know that that's an iceberg and that uh, the volume at that point is 100, that transacted. We would also know if that iceberg is still in the market or not. Uh, and... Uh, uh, Maybe we can uh, find some of that right now. Let's let's turn it on. Soften icebergs on chart. Show icebergs. Okay, let's put in one. Well, let's go with automatic threshold. Let's try that. Okay. So about 196 is what we're looking for here. And we can make this icon size a little bit smaller. Okay. There we go. All right, all right, here we go, guys. Let's see if these buyers can do it now. Looking for our move up into 70 liquidity first. Okay, they're coming in here at 70. So just looking for that move right now. Okay, the buy volume looks great here. We should get the move. Okay, this could turn into our bigger move that we've been waiting and watching for as well. 
without hitting this 4650 area. First stop is 70. And this is what we had drawn up. We were looking for it over here uh, in the break. We got one more push or pullback. Then they started to come back in yet again. Uh, we At this point here, our trend line is broken. We know that. Uh, and in fact, we could even adjust it and look for the other trend or, you know, a kind of a, a adjusted trend line to break as well, and it did. And look at the buy volume above it. Okay. So, uh, yep, yeah, starting to see it. Um, and uh, let's see if we can get up into just 70 here. That's all we're looking for for right now. And okay, once you see this starting to come in back, back in here, nice move up into here. Retest, okay, back in the range here, which this could fail at this point. But once we see this come back in here, this buy volume here, now we're looking for our break. Okay, Primary scenario is looking for our break up into 70 and then potentially 75, uh, what we said here, uh, due to the swing up here. Okay. Now, what if we get uh, uh, sellers that come in? We'd, we'd have to get below kind of this area here. Our swing at 66, but also kind of the 60. Uh, this cluster here in this uh, kind of 64 and a half area uh, is where we'd be looking for sellers to try to come in and uh, drive it back down into the in, into where 60 high 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 volume node down here you know something like that okay so we can mark that up in here and kind of in here okay primary scenario though still going with it uh, move up into 70. Secondary scenario is red dots down in these levels here and uh, kind of trap and have a false breakout here. Okay, looking good. We're just about at 70, looking for it to fill and looking for it to break out. Looking for also starting to anticipate pretty big stop run uh, in some of these areas here. Oh, sorry, uh, Alan. You want to look at the? Uh, um, yeah, we can we can do that. There's our move, guys. Here we should we should start to see some stops hit. Okay, looking for 75 here. Uh, 10.52. Yep, down here. That's what you want to look at. Uh, let's see here. You also have some questions. Uh, David, hold on a minute. Okay. Yeah, hold on a minute. I'm just having some problems with this uh, go-to webinar here. Um, let me pop this out. It's just kind of getting in the way. Um, streaming window, and I can't read your question, so hold on. There we go. Now I can see it. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, when you see a block trade coming on the CME, does this get added to the iceberg? Okay. So, well, uh, the block trade is the aggressor, right? Uh, you see, you know, uh, one order for like 100 or one order for 500 or something like that. Uh, and um, uh, we're talking with an iceberg, we're talking about the other side, uh, the passive order. Uh, they're they're on basically they're hidden from the order book, but they're still passively waiting to get filled um, um, with piecing out uh, their limit order. Uh, each tip of the iceberg that is sent to the market after one transaction, the, the next piece is then sent uh, to the market. So 
I, I hope that makes sense uh, in answering your question, uh, David. You know, I'll post some in, in here the, um, or in the futures chat, uh, uh, some links to a lot of resources on icebergs. We've, we've got a lot uh, that uh, I think you'll find really helpful. All right, so then uh, let's look at uh, Alan's question. Um, and we're still, th there's one There's one caveat with this breakout here. We've seen this trade so many times, or this pattern. We're looking for this trend reversal, right? Now we have all these icebergs backing us up as well. Just a, an amazing amount of icebergs here. Um, you know from yesterday as well um which could move to um what what did we say like something like uh um this could be multi-day move right so we saw the close here we captured those icebergs all of these icebergs all the way down below the swing here from yesterday as well and they're still buying right so we're looking for this bigger move to unfold look at the selling in here on this time frame uh now look at the buying coming back in right you can even look at the double bottom pattern in here selling lack of selling buying coming back in starting to break structure so this is why we're looking for this move back up into uh, just around this 75 ish area here because this is kind of where we broke down from on the even the higher time frame so we're just looking for a pullback to it uh, at the moment now it could turn into the bigger move uh, where would all these icebergs be in in profit well they'll, they'll be in profit up here uh, just above uh, 4,700. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sorry, there would be even profit uh, up up back into here. Uh, basically, uh, uh, they all kind of got involved into here. So probably somewhere around this kind of uh, 87 level, uh, something like that. Now, that's where they're just into profit. Where the, the, they'll really be in profit is when this carries can carry on into multi-day. Okay, so we and we'd be looking for that scenario to play to play out on the higher time frame here. Okay, so we've got the pieces of the puzzle here together. We're just looking for uh, the um, it to unfold. Uh, that's it. All right. Now we can also take a look at our correlated markets. Okay, Nasdaq's looking pretty good here. Uh, what about the Russell? Russell looks great. Okay, so looking for continuation. I, I don't know. I didn't look at the icebergs here. Uh, in these two markets but we're just looking at a swing and a move and now we're looking for momentum uh, in all of these equity markets okay once that train gets going or that ship you know gets kind of turned around uh, you we can it's hard to turn it back around again so we're looking for continuation then uh, in uh, in these markets okay now the, the one caveat is uh, and then Alan I'll get to your question um, uh, you know, we get this move up uh, to an area. We're still kind of in a downtrend here. As you can see, this this is where we drop from here. Okay? And there's still even, you can even look at it in here from 75 on down. You know, uh, we're still in a downtrend. Okay, so all of this heavy selling, uh, and then we're looking for that pullback to 75. And then on this higher time frame, we got to see the bigger um, volume dots above 75 here. And okay, that's going to be kind of critical for a higher time frame move, right? So I, I hope I, I demoed that several times here today, um, looking for smaller time frame and then a higher time frame, um, even like kind of microstructural almost uh, time frames, and then looking for pullbacks and moves, et cetera, uh, in that. So now we're getting back into where we kind of started this webinar of looking for when are, when are we going to get the bigger turnaround in here? And we're not out of the woods yet at all. Uh, but we're starting to note some very, very interesting buy volume coming in here. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we may come up here and that caveat that I was mentioning is you get one kind of test up into 75. You'll get another test back up to 75. You may even break it slightly and it just can't trend. Then you get, you'll get you get your sellers down below that area and then you'll come back down into Likely the first area would be uh, the high high volume node around here at uh, 46.60 uh, volume or value area, or you might even get the move back down into 46.50. Uh, and uh, but 
you know, still being open uh, to the um, uh, the higher time frame move uh, unfolding uh, due to all of these icebergs. All right. So let's get to Alan's question at uh, 10.52. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, great iceberg in here. Beauty. Just a beauty. Look at that. So let's see what your question is, Alan. Okay, thanks. Uh, H.E. Biden is speaking. Nice. Excellent. We get some volatility. Um, Uh, Alan, I see 1,500 trade altogether in this iceberg. Not 1,000. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this. I'm looking at two different outputs here. Uh, you know, th this should equal, um, if I kind of do, you know, um, as long as my filtering is, is correct, or as long as I don't filter this iceberg here, which I actually am, um, uh, then, the, you know, the reading from right down here, which is 82.98 on up to here, uh, which is um, uh, 9835. Uh, it should should be about 1500. If I sub subtract one from the other, so it's, it's somewhere around there. So it looks like it's pretty pretty spot on. Um, and uh, uh, well, this this is how they, the icebergs unfold. You can this is where it gets really really interesting. I I think see the high liquidity here at at 55. The iceberg's front running that. You, you'll see this trick all the time. We saw just back on December 20th in that large move to the upside, we saw some really savvy uh, iceberg uh, management. Really, really, um, uh, you know, uh, some some excellent uh, uh, trading, I, I thought, from uh, the larger players. Uh, this is one of the tricks, for example. Front, they're front running. It might even be their own liquidity. Sellers trying to trying, trying to hit this 55 liquidity here, uh, and uh, and then even the spoof in here you can see, like look at high liquidity here on the offer, but buyers are taking them on, so we're getting kind of a battle in this area here. But these guys want to get filled in their iceberg, so they're front running the high liquidity, they're getting filled in here, totally absorbing any selling pressure in here, not allowing price to drop. Once they're filled, they're out. Sellers drop it. Their iceberg is filled. This is it's totally executed here. We know this. This is fact. This is the kind of stuff that's just amazing to see. Uh, to, to in my opinion, to to see this here, um, and uh, look at the stop run right after uh, as well. So anyone buying in here, they're getting stopped here. Uh, so um, uh, anyway, uh, the uh, uh, context in here uh, is um, is amazing. Uh, Front running it, getting filled in here. Uh, they get filled, then the market drops. Crazy stuff. Okay, what we saw in the in the, on the twentieth was. Uh, let me see if I can show an example. On the twentieth, there there was an iceberg that was, um, you know, it got filled in this area here. So it was kind of it kind of looked like this. Then you can I can kind of. Think of your this orange line here as a blue line for icebergs. Okay, they were getting filled in here uh, at this area here, and they're waiting. Uh, and then what they did was they dropped it below the swing here, or even even below this swing down here. Let's say, uh, and uh, let's just go with this one here. We'll go with this swing here. They dropped it down below it. And then they came back in, or they kept it uh, at that price level, and then they got filled down here. So they're getting filled here, getting a better price down here. 
as they're duping or as sellers are getting the move and like, oh, okay, it's breaking the swing. Uh, great. Sellers are coming in. Should drop lower. They're on the other side. It's like sharks. Uh, just just uh, is bait. Like this is almost bait uh, for the sharks. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, looking looking for them to, um, uh, we finally did get that multi-day reversal. Right? So I'm kind of looking and curious, like, if that's going to happen, uh, you know, next week here. Uh, so um, uh, anyway, you know, I, I, I could possibly see, you know, Monday as another kind of down day to get everyone going wrong, wrong. Uh, wrong direction yet again, uh, and then to finally uh, turn things around, uh, for looking for a multi-day move maybe to the upside uh, next week. Okay, so just we don't know, uh, but we're going to be looking at the order flow to tell us. We're just going through and outlining the scenarios and what that might look like. All right, guys. So I've been going for like an hour and forty-five minutes, almost uh, 40, 40 minutes at least. Uh, so uh, let's wrap it up. We'll, we'll call it a day. Uh, keep looking here. Uh, chum in the water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, let's see, Alan. Did I, so I didn't answer your question. Um, main question was buying absorption around 960. <laughs> totally worth it today. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, On Point. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, you're, you're welcome. It's okay. Okay, gotcha. So I, I answered your question, Alan. Yeah, really great stuff uh, to see. Now, you know, we're still kind of waiting and watching here. Like like I said, like on this higher time frame, just keep an eye out. Uh, you know, this is the key level here, the 75 level, as you guys can see. Uh, and we need to see the buyers back up above it. Uh, boy, can we get a nice stop run and, and a lot of people a short squeeze to the upside too, if we can. All right, so um, uh, anyway, we'll keep an eye out uh, for it. All right, so we went over high time frames, low time frames, uh, looking at this, uh, um, very curious about the icebergs, etc., and when this move might unfold, and, and we'll be on the, on the lookout for the order flow to give us that shift and that change. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great weekend, and we will uh, catch up uh, on Monday. Okay? Yeah, take care. Bye-bye.